everybody and welcome back to day three of my beginner sewing course. A little pat on the back if you're still here and today we're going to be learning about sewing terminology. So by the end of this video you might not be a sewing expert but you're going to sound like one. So let's get into it. The next couple of videos are going to have a lot of information with them so I suggest you write things down like get a notebook, you get a pen or an iPad or a computer, it doesn't really matter and yeah just take some notes, uh, it'll be like your bible for this course so you don't always have to come back to a video, you'll just have it all written down. Okay that's all. So let's start with uh, fabric terminology because that can be quite hard for beginners. So when you go to a fabric store, you're going to get like, you're going to see a lot of fabric rolls. And once you ask the person there to cut it, um, you're going to see that there is an edge that's finished and that's called the salvage. And then the edge that they cut with their scissors is the raw edge. Okay, pause. I'm editing this video right now and I see I've made a mistake. Um, every time I mean to say straight grain, I end up saying grain line. So in order to fix it, Whenever I mean to say straight grain, I'm going to put straight grain on the screen so you know. Now, the terms that you need to know are grain line, cross grain, and bias. Now, what do they mean? Pretty simple. The grain line is always parallel to the salvage, and the cross grain is always perpendicular to the grain line. The bias is different, though, because it's cut on a 45 degree angle from the cross grain and the grain line. So why do you need to know this? Well, uh, when you buy a pattern, there's going to be arrows on every pattern piece, and that tells you how to cut the fabric. So you find the grain line of your fabric, which again is parallel to the salvage, and you just cut your pieces like that. So the arrows on the pattern pieces will need to be parallel to the grain line slash salvage, and obviously also perpendicular to the cross grain. So if your pattern piece has two arrows in the shape of a T, that means cut it on the bias. And how you need to place it on your fabric is one of the arrows need to be, needs to be parallel to the cross grain and the other one needs to be parallel to the grain line. Now be careful because if you have a front piece and a back piece, you can't place them in the same direction. Yes, they both have to be on the bias, but they need to be opposite directions. Here's a drawing to help you understand because it kind of doesn't make sense when I just say it like that. If you don't do that, uh, when you sew the pieces together, it's going to look weird. You want it to drape nicely, you know? Now, how do you find the true bias? Um, just get a ruler and draw two lines, one parallel to the cross grain, the other one parallel to the grain line, and they're gonna come together right at the corner. That's a 90 degree angle. So just do half of that and draw a line uh, like on the bias. Draw a line, diagon <laughs> draw a line diagonally, diagon diagonally, diagonally. Draw, draw a line diagonally, and that's your true bias. <laughs> diagonally. Now, I see this question a lot. Um, there's not many answers online. So how do you find the salvage if there's only raw edges? So let's say you thrifted a piece of fabric or you uh, cut a piece of your own garments. There's not going to be any salvage. So how do you find the uh, salvage? You basically just have to stretch it out in every direction and the direction where it's the stretchiest will be the bias the direction where it's the least stretchy will be the grain line and the direction where it's in between will be the cross grain why uh do some dresses or skirts or shirts call for bias cut that's because it's on a fabric the direction that the fabric has the most stretch so it gives a really nice drape it just flows well in the body, it looks good. And if you cut, let's say, a cowl neck not on the bias, it's not gonna look right. It's gonna look stiff. It's not gonna be flowy. So yeah, for a cowl neck, it will always tell you to cut it on the bias because if you don't, it's gonna look wumpy. <laughs> so if you still don't understand what the grain line and cross grain are, it's just basically the way that the threads uh, follow the fabric. Very, very simple. All right, back to the sewing terminology and let's go in alphabetical order. So back stitch slash back tack. Basically just two or three reverse stitches at the beginning and the end of your seam to make it stronger. If you don't do that, your threads might just come out and then your garment's gonna fall apart. Don't wanna have that. Now, what is a basting stitch? Um, just temporary uh, long stitches meant to be taken out. So you just use the longest stitch length on your sewing machine, minus five. And yeah, it just, since they're long, they're easier to take out with your seam ripper. That's all. 
bias binding um you know the word bias now so maybe you'll have an idea that's basically just strips of fabric cut on the bias so 45 degree angle and they're used to finish raw edges like hems and necks i see them a lot on corsets actually if you ever want to get into that bobbin um you should know this if you watch the other two videos uh it's just the little spool you use um for your bottom thread in your sewing machine Bunhole, kind of self-explanatory. Um, it's used on your sewing machine and it just makes a rectangle of stitches. And then you can just rip out uh, the middle and you can put a button in it. Clipping, okay. So when you're sewing, you always wanna sew the fabrics right sides together. So you're gonna be sewing and there's gonna be a seam allowance. Mine is usually half an inch. And when you're sewing on a curve, if you reverse it so that your, uh, your piece is right side out, it won't look very rounded, so by clipping the seam allowance, like making little cuts, it's just gonna make your seam lay super flat when it's turned inside out. A notch, that is a marking on a pattern to align two pieces of fabric. So let's say you have a bust piece and an under bust piece. Um, you can just align the two notches and that just tells you exactly how they're supposed to connect. Cut on the fold, uh, you're gonna see this a lot in patterns. So basically you take your, your fabric, you fold it once, and then you put that pattern piece that says cut on the fold on the fold, and then you just cut it like that. And you cannot cut bias uh, pattern pieces on the fold. If you see that, that's probably just a mistake. A dart, that's just a seam used to give shape to the body. So we have curves, right? Uh, let's say you wanted to make a garment on the bust, you're gonna put a dart to give the rounded shape. Cause let's say you cut a piece of fabric in a rectangular shape and you put it on your body, it's not gonna be form fitting, but if you put a dart, then it's gonna account for all those curves. You'll mostly see darts on the bust and the waist. Ease, that's the amount of room um, that you're gonna leave out when you're making a pattern. Just because like, we're not just a body that stays still all the time, like we move. So if you want to be able to move in your garment, you need ease in it. It's just more room. Finger press. So when you're sewing two pieces of fabric together, um, you usually want to press the seams open so that when you uh, put it right side out, they're going to lay flat. And if you don't have an iron or you have a fabric that just will not take the heat, you can just finger press to help a little. It won't do wonders, but it's, it's better than nothing. Interfacing. Uh, so there's two types of interfacing. There is fusible and so on interfacing. And what it is, is simply a piece of fabric that you use on top of your regular fabric to make it more stiff, to give it more shape. So with the fusible kind, all you have to do is uh, take the interfacing, take your fabric, put them together. There is a, a right and wrong side to the interfacing. So just make sure you know which side is the right side. And then you take your iron and you just press it on, you know, steam it and they become one. Uh, with sew on interfacing, it's the same thing, except instead of ironing it, you sew it together. Uh, gathering stitch, those are basically two rows of really long stitches. Think basting stitch, uh, except you don't take them out. So there's two rows of them and you leave a pretty long tail at each side, like each end, and you just pull on them and the fabric just gathers. It's very fun. We're gonna learn how to do that later. A hem. Um, we're gonna learn to do lots of hems. And it's basically the bottom of your fabric. Uh, it's folded and then sewn together. That just creates a neat finish. Lining, you know what that is. You've probably worn some before in your dresses or skirts or shirts, whatever. Uh, it's just an extra layer of fabric to give more shape and also to hide the seams and raw edges inside your garment. Pre-shrink, that's very important when you buy a new fabric. So instead of just cutting it and sewing it right away, you're gonna put it in the washer and dryer so that if it shrinks, it shrinks before you sew it together. Uh, that would suck. Pressing, that's when you use the iron to well, press your fabric, get all the wrinkles out before you cut it. That's important so that your pattern is, uh, your pattern's measurements are exact. So that the measurements you cut actually are exact. And also because you're gonna need to uh, iron your seams open. When using an iron, you're gonna need to figure out what temperature uh, is right for each and every fabric, because it's gonna be different for most of them. Uh, let's say you use leather. I wouldn't use an iron on leather. I mean, I have. 
I have before at a really, really low setting. Uh, the reason why you don't want to use one at a high setting is because it's just going to burn the fabric. Like, the fire is not going to catch, but it's going to be ruined. Um, I also burnt tool and it just, it just disappeared. Uh, I don't know why I ironed tool. That was really silly of me. So yeah, just test out your iron on a scrap fabric before you use it on your actual uh, project because you never know, right? You have to test out the exact temperature to use. First your foot, you also know what that is if you watched the other two videos. Um, you're gonna switch out presser foot depending, you're gonna switch out presser feet depending on what seam you wanna use. So I showed you how I wanted to use the blind stitch. A lot of the time you're just gonna use the regular basic uh, presser foot though. Raw edge, it's just the edge of the fabric that's just been cut. So no seam, no nothing, just raw edges with all the little threads fraying. Or not fraying, your fabric might not fray, but it's still a raw edge. Right side slash wrong side, I mentioned this a little bit before. Um, you're gonna see, especially on pattern fabric. Oh, I have one right here. This is obviously the pretty side, so the right side. And the wrong side is the side that's just not as dark. So it just means that when you're wearing it, you want the right side to be showing up, not the wrong side. The wrong side should be on the inside. So when you're sewing, you're placing right side to right side when you're cutting two pieces together or when you're sewing two pieces together because once you open them, it'll be pretty, pretty, pretty. All right, let's put this back. A seam, uh, well, a stitch connecting two pieces of fabric pretty pretty simple seam allowance that's uh the space between the edge of the fabric and your seam i like to use a half inch seam allowance like i said before a seam ripper a tool used to rip out your stitches i told you to buy that at uh day zero stitch in the ditch <laughs> that's where you stitch in the seam line so it just basically looks like you actually didn't sew twice but you did a serger, the machine to uh, overlock your edges, make them look professional and finished. Uh, did you buy one? Did you not? I wanna know. Stitch length, uh, on your sewing machine, uh, you can just choose the stitch length. So if you're using, actually it depends on the kind of fabric you're using. So I find that when I'm sewing with stretch fabrics, I like a longer stitch. And when I'm sewing with uh, non-stretch fabric, I like a bigger stitch. And obviously when you're gathering or doing a basting stitch, you're gonna need the highest length. But yeah, a lot of the times it just depends on your project. And zigzag stitch, that's a stitch used on stretch fabric because you can actually pull it. Like if you're using a straight stitch and you pull your fabric, uh, they're gonna rip. But if you use a zigzag stitch, it's gonna be allowed to stretch, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Don't know why that was so hard. And yeah, it's also used to finish raw edges. So if you didn't buy the serger, you can just use this exact stitch to finish your edges. Is that all? Hmm. Man, that was a long video. Hope you, hope you took notes. Um, now, if you have any other terms that I haven't covered that you want to know what they mean, or well, you could Google it or just you know comment, and I'm gonna tell you. And yeah, I guess uh, the homework would be to just learn all these terms by heart, understand what they mean. And maybe you can even try like reading some sewing articles and see if you can pick up on all these new words and see if you understand what they mean. Well, I guess it's the end of day three. So I'm gonna see you in day four.